When factoring trinomials, you want to use something which I call the magic X. Um, the magic X is actually just a, a thought process, really. It helps you keep your thoughts organized so that when you actually factor this, you can understand where you're getting information and how to use it. Now, you'll notice how I'll circle the first term and the last term. They're your favorites. You're going to take these two terms and multiply them together, which will give you 30 x to the second power. Now, because you have to use every piece, you're going to put this negative 13x down here at the very bottom. Now, the thought process you're trying to use is what's called the guess and check method. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to guess two things that multiply to make 30, but add up to make negative 13. Now, most teachers have troubles explaining this part because what students don't understand is that this step right here is a thought process. So I'll kind of use like thought bubbles, I mean, because you have to guess. You have to think about what numbers you can use, and you have to do this for both sides. The teacher can't say it's always this number, or you should try using these numbers. It doesn't work that way. So you sit there and you say, what two things multiply to 30? Uh, 1 and 30. Hmm, 1 and 30 aren't good. Why? Because 1 plus 30 does not make negative 13x. So this is how your mind is going. Every time you use an idea, though, my suggestion to you is write down the two numbers you tried using. 1 and 30 was not good. Cross it out. What other two numbers? Mr. Moya, 5 and 6. 5 times 6. Yeah, but 5 and 6 can't add up to negative 13. 10 and 3. Well, 10 and 3 can make 13, but the way they would make negative 13 is if it was negative 10 and it was negative 3. Notice how I put x's on this because that makes the x squared because when you multiply and when you combine them, negative 13x. Two negatives also give you a positive 30. So this entire process is just helping you clarify what you're going to use. I typically tell my students to highlight this section right here because this middle region is the most important. You must rewrite your problem. And the way you're going to rewrite it is you're going to take that 5x squared, what you started with, and that positive 6, what you ended with, beginning, end. Now what goes in the middle? Well, there it is, your middle pieces. Negative 10x and negative 3x. From this point, you can start factoring by grouping, which I call the BAM-BAM method, because you get to add in these parentheses, and as you do so, they BAM make the magic and make this problem super easy. So from here, you'd start using GCF. What do these have in common? Oh, Mr. Moya, those have a 5x in common. What do these have in common? these would have a negative 3 in common. Now, the reason it's a negative 3 is because this negative tells you that you must have a negative below. Regular factoring, division, divide, 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 you're going to get x minus 2. And after you divide this, you're also going to get a positive x and a negative 2. Notice how these red uh, terms are identical. This is your way of saying, I know I've done the problem correctly. From there, you combine your two outside terms, and you write down your common factor, and you factored using what I call the magic X.